It's that time of year again, putting up lights on the tree, exchanging presents with friends and family, hot cocoa with a loved one, and for some people like me, a delirious tirade of watching Home Alone 1 and 2 at an alarming and unhealthy rate. I need more Home Alone, not you go all the way. I've watched this one too many, but I have so many copies of Home Alone. What? What is this? Oh. Hey friends, I'm Pragmatic and you better believe it's Christmas time. And I thought I'd take this time to talk about video games based on one of my favorite holiday movies, Home Alone. I mean, we can't really talk about Snowboard Kids every year. The 80s and 90s had their share of licensed games. There wasn't much of licensed media that wasn't turned into a video game of some sort. So when Home Alone debuted in 1990 with a lovable cast like Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, and Daniel Stern, and composition from the master himself, John Williams, it was inevitable that we'd be seeing these memorable movies become video games. And there were a lot of them, spanning across consoles of all kinds. But today I want to focus on the SNES versions of Home Alone 1 and 2. These games both run along the same format, though having them based on their respective movie makes for a change in scenery and some gameplay. Home Alone 1 has our two lovable bandits ready to burglarize the McAllister house and capture Kevin while they're at it, so basically they skip through the last 25 minutes of the movie. The objective of this game varies a bit from the movie itself, as instead of using zany tactics to thwart the burglars until the police arrive, you're collecting possessions and dropping them into the McAllister family's safe? I guess Kevin values material things more so than his own life. With the addition of the bandits comes these random mob boss type guys that will try to grab items before you can. Luckily you have your trusty squirt gun to stop them. Kevin can get other items like the slingshot that stuns foes quicker and a softball that removes enemies entirely. These will come in handy as you scour the house for valuables or drop into the basement safe. Watch out though because Marv and Harry are both on the loose and oh god Harry what have they done to you? The wet bandits look worse for wear in this version. I mean Marv just looks pissed. Wow okay that's a noise to make. Shame that it just didn't bit crush the scream he makes in the movie. You can set up some traps for the bad guys and doing certain things can cause some wacky antics to happen to remove foes. While most of the items are pretty obvious to get, some need a little more thinking to get to, but not that much. Kevin, you're the size of the table, just reach out and grab it. Kevin can also gain more lives by finding lovely cheese pizza, which will definitely come in handy. Once you've avoided all the bandits and stored all your items, all that's left is making it down to the basement and facing the creatures that lie in wait. I mean, look at this! He's got bats, rats, and spiders running rampant down here. I think the McAllisters are well off enough to afford some pest control. I mean, look at this! This has to be some kind of health violation. Maybe shell out some cash to afford an exterminator instead of buying multiples of the same bear to put around your house, yeah? While John Williams himself had no involvement, the little 16-bit renditions of his compositions are pretty pleasing to say the least. Good job. From here, it's pretty much rinse and repeat as Kevin collects items from different wings of the house, drops down some classic TVs and VCRs which frankly wouldn't survive a two-story drop, and then fights a giant spider or something. That's pretty much all to note from this game. Oh, except this game over screen. Yes. Yes! With the success of Home Alone 2, it'd be inevitable that we get a sequel on the SNES, this time with some changes and some improvements. It's Home Alone 2, which means it's time to get lost in New York. Or for most of the game, lost in a hotel in New York. This game starts you on bad terms with Tim Curry and the rest of the hotel crew as you make your way through floor after floor of random objects and people that all want you dead. Kevin has come a little bit more prepared this time around, adding in a new slide mechanic that can deal with anything that isn't living. Most people can be dealt with by using Kevin's assortment of weapons. Using a dart gun will stun them for a bit, while this punching glove gun and bead necklace can completely remove enemies, which can be extremely helpful. You can also get this turtle dub ornament to become Sonic the Hedgehog. I like that most of the art in this game is just pixelized stills from the movie. Tim Curry is looking pretty good, while the bandits are something to say the least. This game has a bit more challenge as some enemies can instantly make Kevin lose a life if they grab him. It's always good to keep your heavier firepower handy to deal with them. 
Kevin still gets hell from a few slices of pizza. But I feel you're pretty much on your own life-wise when you get out of the hotel. I will say that some of the enemy placement seems unfair. Like the very start has you needing to move instantly lest you get apprehended for simply existing. Once you're out of the hotel, it's a walk through the park. Literally as I'm pretty sure this area is supposed to be Central Park. This part mirrors the same format and from there you're near the end of the movie where Kevin lays down his battle plans yet again for the bandits. But this part is surprisingly a little different. You'll have to enter different rooms with different keys to find ways to outsmart the bandits, which will get you more keys to unlock more doors. I like this because it better showcases the antics of the second movie while allowing slight changes to the gameplay. This eventually leads to a chase and with help from the bird lady from the movie, Kevin is once again reunited with his mom and all is well that ends well. While significantly short, I like the added variety and challenge of this game. It keeps you on your toes and manages to keep you entertained. That's saying a bit when my expectations for licensed games are usually pretty low. I definitely give these games a play since they try to keep the elements of the movies in the game, while only varying from plot slightly and in a way that makes it still feel relevant to the actual movie itself. While I don't think these games hold up to the wonder of the movie, they're definitely something to play to get into the spirit. So Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. I didn't mean that. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Did you go up against the bandits in any of the Home Alone video games? Let me know in the comments and like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Also check me out on Twitter as that's the best way to find out what I'm up to. As always, keep it practical and have a happy holidays.